you don't have to do things that not, are not aligned with who you are. And that is when you can design your career path. You can design your professional future. So I'm talking to you live right now at the Gaylord Opryland Resort in Nashville, Tennessee. The past three days I spent here at a conference with 5,000 other entrepreneurs all coming here to learn how to grow their business and have the impact they want in the world. And most importantly, how to change the lives of the clients that we serve. And as I was going through this conference, it occurred to me that how important it is to sell, to sell yourself, right? Because here I am, I'm making videos, you're listening to me, and I'm hoping that my words is gonna land in your ears, it's gonna land in your heart, and it's gonna take you, cause you to take these inspired actions that's, that's gonna make the most positive changes in your life and in your career. And so as I was at this conference, I was thinking, well, how important it is to sell yourself? Of course, when you're in a business, but at the same time, it's equally as important to sell yourself if you are trying to get to that next level of your career. If you're trying to change careers and you are trying to sell yourself to the hiring manager or to your potential employer. It's really important to sell yourself, to market yourself as well. And so what I wanted to share with you today is some principles I learned at this conference and I want you to listen to the principle, the thinking behind what I'm saying. Because although it may sound a lot like entrepreneurship or business, it applies to your career as well. So listen to the principles I'm, I'm about to present to you and why that is important. I do my best to, of course, explain those, but of course, if, you, if, you, if it sounds a lot like business, please know that you are in business, right? Anytime that you are employed by someone working for a company, you are also serving clients as well. It may not be your clients directly, but there is a, a certain population that you are serving, even if you are working in a job. So this applies to you. Your career is your career or your business. In entrepreneurship, entrepreneurs also have a career, really. So this applies to you just as much as it does to a business owner as an entrepreneur. Okay, so take a walk with me as I present to you four principles of how to sell yourself effectively, no matter what industry that you're in. So before I dive into the content, before I share my four principles, I want to give you an opportunity. If you want to implement this in your career right now, I have a career intensive. So if you were interested in that, you want to implement and you want some step-by-step -step guide on how to implement what I'm about to share, then just go to the link below. It's careerrevisionist.com slash intensive and the link will be in the show notes below. The first principle is that no one could possibly get to know who you are if they don't know you exist. Right. And this is the first milestone in one's career or in one's business, is the milestone of, of obscurity. In obscurity, no one knows you exist. And when you are in the stage of obscurity, the symptoms of that is just feeling like you gotta compete on price. Or in other words, you have to compete on, I gotta make sure that I, that I offer or that I can accept the lowest salary that my employer offers me because you're obscure, because no one knows you exist. So then therefore, they don't know the value you can bring, the knowledge, the experience, the potential that you can bring in that environment. And so that the symptom is that, well, I, gotta, I don't think I can accept a higher salary. I don't think I can get paid my worth yet because I gotta make sure that I can accept that lower salary so that I can be more competitive, right? And the same thing is true with business owners. In that stage of obscurity, business owners feel like they gotta compete on price, right? So that's the first principle. No one could possibly know what potential you can bring, how much your worth is, and what value you can bring in the industry marketplace if they don't, show, if they don't know you exist. The second principle is that competition is fierce when nobody knows what's different about you. And here's what that looks like. Normally, when people ask, what do you do? The answer is usually some sort of a job title, like, oh, I am a product manager, or I'm a business coach, or I am a project manager, or I'm a senior manager, right? The title usually comes first, and that's because of the way we were trained in society. The way we were trained to introduce ourselves is to tell us what we do. But the problem with that is if you say it that way, and the person listening, the marketplace, the industry marketplace, doesn't see any what is different about you, then you're in a highly competitive field. Because how many business coaches are there out there? How many product managers are, out, are there out there? Right? How many fill in the blank are there out there? So if nothing differentiates you from all your competitors, the symptom that you'll feel from that is that you're just gonna be relieved if someone offers you anything. So then you're willing to accept the lowest offer out there because you don't know whether or not that can come again. 
right? So if you're in the competitive, this is like the competitive milestone, if you're in the competitive milestone, you have to think about what makes you different from anybody that is doing something similar to you. Because let's face it, there's no new information under the sun, right? There's no new, nothing new that is happening, no new information, nothing new that you can learn that hasn't already been out there, right? Ideas are rehashed and the, 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 the generation of new ideas comes from, a gen, of, comes from a combination of old ideas, right? So what makes you unique is you. So that is the second principle is if you don't differentiate yourself, and it's not about being better, it's just about being different, right? How can you vocalize, how can you articulate that you are different? And when you operate from that, from those principles, that's where you're in this space where you have no competition. Principle number three is this. The point at which you become branded is the point at which your message becomes meaningful. Right? And Jeff Bezos said it best. I love this quote from him. And he said that branding is what people say about you when you leave the room, when you're not even there. And most people are not intentional about their brand. Right? And this, branding is not just about the logo and the colors of your business, or it's not about what you wear if you're working for somebody. Branding is really all that makes up who you are. What's different about you? What's unique about you? What knowledge do you bring to it? What unique skill set do you bring to it? All of that makes up your branding. When you are branded, and when you are intentional about what, what you want people to see, then you leave the room and what people say about you is consistent with what you want them to say about you. Right, so branding brings about three things. And this is key. The first thing that it brings is when people associate your name with your brand, it, they see the results that you can provide. So that's the first thing. They see the result that you can give to your clients, or they see the result that you can give to your team or your, or your employer or your supervisor in that company. The second thing that it gives is they can see the experience that you provide, right? So the first thing is results. The second thing is experience because everything is experiential. We, don't, we, we may not remember information, but we certainly will remember experiences. So what is that experience you're giving to your clients? What is that experience that you're giving to your team members or, your, or the people that are working with you in that company, right? So that is really important. And the third thing is the most important thing that branding will give you, will, will give you, with a message that will get shine through. And that is your expert insight. Your expert insight. When you are branded, you have an expert insight. Whether you are aware of it or not, you have one, right? You have gained certain knowledge throughout your life. And I'm not just talking about college. Of course, college is included in that. But you have expert insight from things you've learned outside of school from things you've tried on your own, from all those hobbies, those hunches that you've had, those risks that you've taken, the interests that you've pursued, all of that combined is your specialized knowledge. And it provides expert insight. That expert insight is what people will pay you for. It's what people will listen to you for. It's why people resonate with you and why people see you as an expert in your domain. So be intentional about your brand and with these three things, right, the results you provide, the experiences that you give people, and your expert insight, that is when you are branded and people associated with your identity and with your name. The fourth principle is this. You can sell yourself to anyone in any industry marketplace if you become the only choice, if you become the one. And it is a, it's a process, right? First, you're obscure, right? And then you have a brand, and then you know your expert insight, you have your, your expertise, you provide, you, you're clear on what differentiates you. All of that is a process. And the final stage of that process is when you become the one. When you become the one, you have a choice. You can choose who you want to work with. You can choose who you want to work for. And at the same time, you can charge what you want. You can ask for and negotiate the salary that you deserve, the one that is the worthy of you. One, and you don't have to accept positions that are beneath you. You don't have to do things that are not aligned with who you are. And that is when you can design your career path. You can design your professional future. Becoming the one is a process. It doesn't happen overnight, but it is something that you create with intent. It is something that you create knowing all the steps that I've mentioned in this process. Because when you become the one and you are the logical choice, it becomes a no-brainer. People decide, first of all, based on emotion, 
but afterwards they, talk, they, they think about the logic behind it, does it make sense? They may like you in the beginning, and that's an emotional response because you've given them an experience, but to solidify it, to really solidify it, they have to be able to justify it logically. So when you become the only choice, that's when you're appealing to their logic. And that is when you can sell effectively to any industry marketplace. So I understand that might have been a lot to present to you. So if, do you mind if I just spend one minute to recap what I just said? The four principles to sell yourself effectively. The first one is moving from a place of obscurity, right? Because if people won't know what you have to offer if they don't know about you, right? So that's the first principle. The second principle is the one about competition. If you are presenting yourself as a job title, if you're presenting yourself from not differentiating yourself, then you, are, you will have a ton of competitors and it's not possible to know what makes you different. Right? And the third stage is being branded. This is a key important milestone. When you are branded, that means that you know people associate your name to the experience that you provide, the results you provide, and also to your expert insight. And the fourth principle is when you are the one. When you are able to differentiate yourself so well and repeatedly and consistently, then you become the logical choice, the only choice. So those are the four principles to sell yourself effectively to any industry. So now you're familiar, you've heard me introduce the four principles on how to sell yourself effectively. You're probably wondering, well, what do I do next? How do I do this? What does this look like out in the real world? If that's you and you're interested in having a step-by-step -step guide on how to implement this, you are wanting to change your career, you are wanting to move to that next level, and you want to know, what, how do I implement? I want some, a little bit of hand-holding here. I have something for you. It's a 21-day career intensive where I show you step-by-step -step how to implement this to the next step of your career. So if you're interested, check out the link below. It is at careerrevisionist.com slash intensive. And the links are in the show notes below. So just click somewhere down there and I'll see you on the inside. Did you enjoy what I talked about? Was it helpful? If it was, give me a thumbs up. And also remember to subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Ring that bell below as well so that you can receive notifications each time I upload a new video every single week. And also comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Comment below on what you have learned, right? Anything aha moment, things you've never heard before, or things you have heard before, sort of, but not said quite in this way. So comment below and let me hear from you.